Hi, I'm Nathan. I go by Pete Parker, and every week I do comic book reviews because that's the rule around my house. If I want to keep buying them, then I have to review them. So this is going to be uh, the review of Wolverine number 12, written by Jason Aaron and drawn by Renato Lieres, I think is how you say his name. Uh, this is uh, the arc where uh, Wolverine's come back from hell, and he's out to have vengeance on the people who sent him to hell. Uh, and we're getting more backstory about who these people are. Now, previously, the last two issues, I did not enjoy as much the uh, backstories of the previous two characters, especially uh, this last one. Or, no, the first one. This last one was okay. But this one's really good. This one, maybe as being a father or having had a pregnant wife at some point, I uh, can feel this guy's pain. But at the same time, you also get, you know... Uh, a crazy appearance by the Hulk. Wolverine and the Grey Hulk were fighting, basically, and this guy's wife and unborn baby died as a result, so he's really pissed at Wolverine. Um, and then you you get the same kind of lame uh, uh, bad guys that the Red Right Hand has hired to fight Wolverine, who I think at this point are just cannon fodder. I think him killing these people... Uh, is part of the plan for these people for him to suffer which I think is supposed to be revealed slowly like this and we're supposed to start getting this idea uh, because it, he seems to just be killing these guys like they're kind of ridiculous characters they have kind of ridiculous weapon powers and each one of them comes up to him and, and expects to kill him uh, and then ends up dying at the end and they don't seem to be too hurt about that nobody seems to be too pissed especially the people organizing this whole event so it makes me believe that that is uh, intentional. Um, one of the bad parts about this book that also happened in New Avengers this week was this this giant ad, which alone is all right, which was in every single Marvel book this week, uh, was not only printed as the giant ad here, but on the very next page uh, had one full uh, page ad also. So you got this whole thing interrupting the story and then right on the next one you got the same thing now i didn't notice this as much in this book as i did in the new new avengers book that happened right now because i was more focused on who these characters were and i was really wrapped up in uh the history behind this other guy uh connected to the red right hand or who had been in the red right hand um, and then there's a new kind of bad guy involved in here. What you don't get in this issue is any resolution about um, Dokken or Dakin or whatever. Uh, Wolverine's son, who appeared in the end of the last issue and said, I can help you get revenge on, on Wolverine or whatever. There's no mention of that in, in here at all. I'm, I'm imagining we're going to go back to it again. But there is some creepy little kid who has red eyes and has a dog with red eyes. And he's a snake also, or the, the his master's a snake. Um, so there's a lot of like demonic kind of situation specific issues here. And this is the first time that we really saw that uh, the snake bad guy, whoever it is, some evil god has some uh something to do with the red right hand being able to make wolverine suffer um so it's great i mean uh i really don't like the uh cannon fodder that the red right hand has employed and i've found in the in the past that the uh history behind each person in the red right hand has been a little tedious a little unnecessary a little bit unrelatable uh but this one was different you had uh aspects of the of the rest of the marvel universe coming into this situation and why that guy didn't blame the hulk too but blamed wolverine i guess wolverine was the cause of the accident that caused his wife to die or whatever but still that wrapped into this along with kind of being a realistic kind of situation made it easier to relate to and understandable um so this is a really great book, uh, and, and I'm enjoying this the entire arc more and more as we're going into it, because I feel like a lot of the complaints that I had in the first two issues really were intended to be the way they were. It wasn't, uh, they didn't, they don't think, Jason Aaron and Giedis don't think that these characters like Cannonfoot or whatever the chick with the spiky hair parts in her hair are completely awesome. I don't think they think that. I think that at this point that they are just uh, low level characters we're meant to push through because they're all dying like crazy and doesn't seem to bother anybody
So that, that I'm excited about. I'm excited the direction that it's going. And I think the payoff in this arc is going to be incredible because Jason Aaron knows how to write a comic book. So anyway, I'm going to give this issue a 5 out of 5. I really enjoyed it completely regardless of the you know lame uh, cannon fodder characters. And I didn't have a lot of issues. The art's good. The uh, writing is great. So uh, there you go. Wolverine number 12, 5 out of 5. So if you like this review and you want to see any other ones that I've done, uh, you can do a search for uh, video reviews by Pete Parker, or you can look on YouTube under Spidey207. That's where I upload them. Um, I'm also on fa fan sites like uh, iFanboy and Comic Vine and uh, Marvel and DC databases. All the reviews get posted up there also, so uh, check them out. In any case, uh, thanks for listening. I will not be probably doing this next week because I'll be out of town in San Diego Comic-Con, but hang tight and I'll either uh, have some ready for you when I get back or do all of them at the same time two weeks from now. Uh, in any case, thanks for listening and it's much appreciated. We'll talk to you next time.